Hi, and welcome. I'm Matt, and I'm here to talk about books, because that's the name of the channel. Matt Reviews Books. Now, if you're new here, this is not about new books. There's a, a segment of books I just don't see being talked about. I mean, really, they get reviewed when they're first released, and then 40 years later, what does anybody know? They're just books, and you have to hear about them by word of mouth. So here I am, trying to rectify this terrible injustice. Uh, so today, today, this week, we're talking about an oldie but a goodie. This week, we're talking about fantasy, high fantasy, epic fantasy, sword and sorcery kind of stuff. And that is David Edding's Pawn of Prophecy. Number one in a uh, pentology? What is it? A trilogy? Pen yeah. There's five books in the series. The Bulgariad. They were first published in 1982. 1982, 1983. There's a couple of years in there where they uh, came out. For my money, they're classic uh, fantasy. So let's get started! <laughs> This is sort of the synopsis of the first book. I could do all of the books, but let's just stick with the first book. Okay, let's get our format down and stick to it. So we got a boy who is, yeah, I think at the start of the story, he's probably nine, ten years old, and he's being raised by his aunt, apparently, uh, Garion. That's our, our protagonist here. His parents are dead, being raised by his aunt. And she is a cook in a kitchen, obviously. She's a cook on a farm. And the boy is illiterate. He is just one of the kids. And his aunt runs tight ship. She's in charge of the kitchen and nobody uh, nobody gainsays what good old Aunt Paul says. Then one night, this old man shows up. The backstory, if you pay attention, he's been coming around for a while. But he's this old storyteller. And he shows up one night, in the middle of the night. Wakes up Aunt Paul, wakes up Garion, and they have to run. They have to leave. Leave now. Pack up what you can and God, let's go. Uh, they actually, one of the the people from the farm, one of the, the blacksmith, Dernick, good old Dernick. He comes along with them and they leave in the middle of the night. Um, not sure whether they're racing for their lives or whether they're chasing after somebody. Something's happened and Mr. Wolf and Aunt Paul and Garion and now Dernick have to go do stuff. But they're very careful to not say anything in front of Garion. As the story progresses, turns out Aunt Paul is not really who she, she thinks she, uh, well, not who she says she is, but who Garion thinks she is. And neither is Mr. Wolf. Mr. Wolf is not the guy uh, who Garion thinks he is. This is where we start moving toward um, something, some thoughts. So, okay, look, uh, if you haven't read the book, uh, the Bulgarian, if you haven't read the series, you'll notice, and it's true, that the characters and the writing is stilted right at the beginning. Not the most fluid. Now, David Eddings at this point was already an, an established author. He had writing credits, novels under his belt, um, and had already achieved certain acclaim. And so this was a, a departure from his mainstream stuff. And it's kind of obvious because he doesn't have... Uh, he still seems, uh, he's, like, the writer is awkward. Eddings doesn't seem to be real comfortable yet with the description of his world and the characters. And so they're a little bit cardboardy, a little stiff. But he, he loosens up as the narrative progresses. Uh, from the beginning of the book to the end of the book. By the end of the book, he's, he's starting to flow. He's, he's into it. And look, this is also, it, to truth be told, it's genre, right? It's high fantasy, which is not bad. That means you know that there's a structure, there's a specific structure that you're going to look for, and it's how Eddings, in this case, executes that structure. What does he fill in? All the spaces of the reluctant hero going on an, an adventure. And that is where it's he does this really well. Eddings is already a journeyman a uh, writer by this point, a journeyman author. He knows how to write a story. And yeah, you could probably read the book on a prophecy on an airplane flight. It doesn't be a long airplane flight, you know, but uh, if you add in layovers, recommendation. 
I would say go read this. This is an older book that I think is worthwhile to read. To to really remember 80s fantasy, Sword and Sorcery has it, was, it had its own footprint in uh, literature. And this is part of it. So, with that, I'm done rambling. Not really. I took notes. But I'm, I am done here. So, go find that book. Go forth and read it. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. Hit like, hit subscribe. I'm going to be uploading new reviews every Wednesday. And I also have my second channel, uh, my personal channel, over uh, Matthew Reed in Mendocino. That's the other one that's um, a little bit more experimental. I'll just try stuff out. This one is all about the reviews. So hit like, hit subscribe, leave me a comment. Tell me what books you want me to review. I'll go see if they're in the library or I'll buy them on Amazon. Or